Hello, I'm Enzo, and today I'll be playing Mr. Mime. And today I'll be going over caves. What are caves? Well, after about 45 kilometers, you unlock these cool little caves that spawn. The chance that they spawn is completely random. Usually, when you first log in, you'll have one or two spawned. But from then on, it's pretty much random. How do caves work? They kind of look something like this. This cave is extremely deep, meaning that it has a lot of stuff to go to explore. So how do you use them? You start out with three types of drones. The basic drone, magnetic drone, and aerial drone. Here's how I start. I start, you have to look three across, so it'll go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, and you'll put your aerial drone about here. Aerial drones can spot these question marks three away. Say your aerial drone is here. It can spot all three of those nodes. Aerial drones are completely unique. They can go over obstacles such as lava and boulders, but still get damaged by radiation. I have a level four drone, meaning I can carry three cargo. Drones cost fuel to operate. Aerial drones cost 150. Magnetic, costs 200, and basic drones only cost 100. As you level them up, they'll use less fuel and go faster, meaning you can reach further destinations. This node is way too far away and it can't actually see it, so we'll just go ahead and send a basic drone. Basic drones go ahead and pick up your cargo. Although aerial drones can hold cargo as well, they can't hold as much and use fuel up way quicker. The issue with that is that basic drones take way longer to go ahead and find their destination. While we wait for the drone to go ahead and explore more of the cave, here's what the cave menu looks like. This will show all of your active caves. You usually won't have more than three. That's the max I've gotten, or sometimes even four. Down here is your stored treasure. Now, I like to save up my time lapses so I can use them for the future, as well as mineral piles and buffs. But I recommend taking your money bags and your building materials instantly. I also sometimes even use chests. If you didn't know, you can hold shift and click a chest and open it instantly without opening the annoying chest menu. On the drones. Here, this is where you can level up your drones. When you level them up more, they become more efficient. They use less fuel and they can travel further. They also get a bit more HP. I talked about the three types of basic drones. This is called a healing drone. I honestly think it's useless. If it goes through even a few hazards, it will just die. I don't really recommend spending any resources on it. What you want to focus on, of course, is upgrading all the drones. At first, I thought the magnetic drone was useless, but over time, it actually is incredibly handy to have if one of your drones dies in a hazard, which happens more often than you'd think. As our drones are still going, I should explain some of the achievements associated with caves. The first one, Splunker, fully complete cave. What does that mean, you ask? It means you need to collect every single little piece of treasure from this, even from the end. Usually means that your drones are going to die and you'll have to pick them up or move the stuff out of hazard's way. It gets a little annoying, but it's extremely simple when you have smaller earth caves to complete. Get cave drone to level 3, well that's self-explanatory. Fully complete 10 caves, it's just do the first achievement 10 times. Fully complete a cave of 15 depth. Now this is a bit complicated. Let's say this radiation right here is 15 nodes in. That's 15 depth. The cave has to be at least that long. The deeper you go on Earth, the longer caves get, and once you get to the moon, you get these ridiculously massive caves. So it's pretty easy to complete. Now, the last achievement, even one I haven't gotten yet. Have a drone survive a trip with less, less than 5% of its HP left in full cargo. Now, this is extremely interesting. We should start by explaining hazards in caves. There are four types, and we can see them all right here. Lava. This does damage to ground drones over time, not the aerial drones. It does 15 damage a second. Then we have mud. This just makes drones take twice as long to progress through it. Radiation is like lava, 
but it only does 10 damage a second, but it can also affect aerial drones. Drones are usually only in these cave chambers, or nodes, for about one second. They take longer if they're drilling or going through mud. And this is normal. How do you fix this? It's quite simple. You have to first look at your cave and check your path. So we have one hazard here. What connects it? This node. Magnetic drones can pick up resources from one node around it. So it'll pick up that and drag it to that node. Here, it'll drag that into the radiation. You don't want that, so you have to go pick it up. That's all right, that's all right. Lava, there's nothing around it for it to pick up, so that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. And that one, it does not drag the health packs in. Once that drone is done making its pickup, we can go ahead and send the magnetic drone there. Something I also forgot to mention is fuel. This is another cave upgrade, but instead you find it in your crafting menu. Here is where you can increase your max fuel and how quickly your fuel regenerates. I would heavily recommend going fuel regeneration first over maximum fuel. This means you can send out more drones in a shorter period of time. You'll notice this here, 2.2. A drone normally takes two minutes to travel from one location to the next. So in this case, it takes just less than a minute, and even less when you upgrade to level 5. Magnetic drones do 3.3, taking even less time than normal drones to travel between nodes. And aerial drones are extremely fast. Fuel use is how much fuel they use a second, meaning this drone uses 0.05 fuel a second, meaning it takes about 20 seconds for this drone to use one fuel, and it can hold 100 fuel total, giving you just a little bit over half an hour of use with this drone, meaning you can go really far with it. To explain all of these little rewards, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, this is a buff. It can be an, almost any buff in the game. Here are some of the buffs I've collected. You can get any buffs. The next type of resource is a time lapse. You get longer time lapses based on the depth and your progression. Chests. These are just basic chests. You can also find gold chests, although they are extremely rare, and they function exactly the same as the ones you find in the map. Mineral piles. These give you a bunch of a certain type of mineral. It, completely random what you get, but you will get a lot of money out of these. Especially, I should have mentioned this before, the resources get better the deeper you go in the cave. That's why this is a 43 minute time lapse. Building materials. Caves are the best source of building materials in this game. You can get a crazy amount, like 9 here, the maximum is 10. And these are used for a lot of late game crafting. Money. Well, they're just money bags. Pretty self-explanatory. You have to actually click on them in your cave menu here to redeem them. Health packs. Drones collect these like they would any other treasure, but instead of giving them loot, it just replenishes their health. Scientists. It's exactly what it says. It gives you another scientist. If one of your scientists dies, you can just go ahead, bury them, click this, and you'll get a new one. Now, I'm going to give a tip on how I generally view caves. The first drone I send out is the Scout. It collects some resources, but more importantly, exposes all the other resources. And very rarely, you will have to send up a cleanup crew, a magnetic drone to, well, fix your first drone's mistake. The magnetic drone is going here because it will collect treasure from the nodes around it, including the one in front of it, but never behind it, meaning if your treasure got stuck here, you'd have to try to magnetic drone it over here, but the drone would likely die and you'd lose your treasure almost permanently. These types of scenarios, they do happen. There's nothing you can do. Just move on to the next cave. Try to get as many nodes before it as possible. It's unfortunate, but it does happen very often. Drones take a while to collect treasure, meaning if you send two drones at the exact same time, one will pass another, meaning if you want one drone to collect all your treasure, you have to wait a while to send the next drone. 
This is interesting. I thought that drones actually just stayed in hazards for one second. It's weird, but it looks to be 1.2 seconds if it took 12 damage. That means you have some complicated math to do if you want to get the drone return with less than 5% of health and full cargo achievement. How do you do this? Well, I haven't done it. It's really difficult to do. My best bet, however, is you actually need a magnetic drone. Although the issue with these is that they are extremely tanky. But the upside to these drones is the fact that they carry no cargo, which means their cargo is technically full. It's a weird loophole, but say you had the right combination of radiation and lava, it is theoretically possible. Now, how much health do you need to get these drones below? The drone in question has 550 max health. Now, what you're going to do is you want it below 5%, right? Times 0 0.05. So it has to be below 27.5 health. Or at that exactly. Which is a really complicated thing to do. According to my math, I don't know if it's my level 4 drones or if the cave chambers do take longer than a second, but it seems that basic drones, it seems that they take 12 damage when they go into radiation and 27 when they go into lava. So thank you guys for watching the... No, no, no. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. I hope you appreciate it. I also hope that maybe it's helped them. Anyways, this is Enzo from Looking to Gaming, signing out.